Sarah Bessie's blogging and books have become a safe place for those wrestling with their faith, giving them permission to ask tough questions and be honest about where they are on their spiritual journey. Her new book, Out of Sorts, explores her own journey of sorting through the beliefs of her childhood and details how she came to peace with her evolving faith. Thank you so much for joining me, Sarah. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to sharing your story. And I think, you know, for a lot of people who may be in a place where they're questioning certain aspects of what they've believed or they're in that process where kind of God's changing it, it's, it's encouraging to hear someone else's story. So tell me a little bit about how this all started. Um, well, I mean, it started off, my family was more of a first generation believers in Western Canada. Uh, so growing up in kind of small, I call them happy clappy churches, uh, meeting in leisure centers, uh, community centers, someone's living room. And the faith that I started off with was really beautiful to me. But like a lot of people, I think when you're moving through your spiritual formation, you kind of start off with that first gift of your faith. And then eventually you kind of hit this point of almost... Um, just wondering and sort of sorting through, you know, what is it that I want to move forward with? What is it I want to carry with me? What is it that I need to let go of? Um, and at that point in your life, you can feel like you have two options, that you either completely move forward with what you were given at first, or you just burn it down, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so instead being able to find that third way forward of saying, no, I want to bring forth what bring along with me what I was given to begin with, but I also want to learn and move forward and, and, and have some other aspects of things that might change as well and, and welcome that. And some of what you experienced in life is what brings those questions up. And I think that's kind of normal. It's like, you know, I interviewed somebody recently who said that um, I had to walk out the door of what I knew about Jesus because he, he couldn't cover what I was mm -hmm. experiencing. But then I walked in a new door with him and a new yeah. understanding. Yeah. I know that you went through some hardship. You lost a number of children in miscarriage. And that was, I think, part of what set you on this journey, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think that any time that we are shifting, usually in what we believe, it's because we're paying attention. Um, and if you're paying attention in your life and if you're kind of on that threshold of change or grief, um, that will often bring out the questions that you usually can keep very neatly hidden away uh, and tucked away in, in the spots where you just, as long as you don't look at it, you can sort of pretend everything's fine. Um, but when you are in, um, you know, a season of grief or change, um, that's a bit of a liminal space and a thin place uh, where I believe that God oftentimes really wants to meet with us. And instead of fearing those questions that arose out of those experiences, I found that the Spirit of God was often waiting in them uh, and in the midst of them. And I think the thing is, it's, it's tough to challenge beliefs that you've had your whole life and mm -hmm. it's messy yes. and sometimes you're messy about it. So we don't always do it in a lovely way, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the conclusions that we come to along the way aren't always even true. Like mm -hmm. we, we may settle somewhere else, but in that tumult, you know, we're not always nice people. So how do we... How do we, you know, like you said, think critically, but not become like this critical, judgmental, cynical, terrible person, you know, which can happen, <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I, you know what? I think there's even some forgiveness or grace for that time. Um, you know, it's almost like, you know, when you're going through your regular, you know, human development, like as a teenager, you often overcorrect or you define yourself by what you're not, you know? And so oftentimes I think maybe our spiritual development can kind of mirror that, uh, at times. And so there's going to be times where it's going to be messy. There's going to be times when you are, um, you know, feeling like a bit of a know-it-all or you feel like you've kind of finally got now this is the right answer. And, um, you know, there's room for that within our stories as well. I always joke that I'm a bit of a recovering know-it-all at this point. <laughs> you. Yeah. It's because, I mean, at this point you kind of start to hold, um, you know, things in your answers and your opinions with a bit more of an open hand. Um, I mean, I have found uh, throughout the journey that almost everything that I th thought for sure has been sometimes called into question. Um, and yet the thing that I have found is even though I am always changing and, and growing and being refined, uh, it's in response to the fact that Jesus is unchanging. Um, and I think that that's, that's good and I think that's healthy. I think if we're not changing, then it means that, you know, that's, that's not really the point, right? So how does that work in marriage? Because when this <laughs> happened to you, your husband was on a completely different trajectory, kind of the same thing that started it, but he responded in a completely different way. So how tough is that on a marriage when you're supposed to be one, you know, and religion is kind of a big deal, right? Like our faith oh. is like the essence of who we are. So how do you manage that? Absolutely. I mean, that was a huge part of our story was, you know, my husband was in, at the time in full-time vocational ministry and I felt like I couldn't even go 
in the door of a church uh, for a long time. And so there were people on both sides who were kind of wondering how this was going to resolve itself. And he was moving more and more towards, um, you know, having, you know, going to seminary and having, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, structure. And I was just, you know, not in that place. (laughs) (laughs) And so being able to love each other well in that place, I think was a real gift. Um, When you're walking through it in a marriage, I think that one of the the things that's most important is realizing that you need to give each other the gift of changing, of allowing there to be room to change. We've been married for 15 years now. Uh, I'm certainly not the same woman that I was you know, when we got married at at 22, but he isn't the same man either. And being able to keep pace with each other, grow together, um, have those conversations, give each other permission to be wrong um, and loving well in that place. I think that that tells a a greater um, testimony than having matching opinions all the time. I've heard someone say in relationship, do you want to be right or do you want to be in relationship? That's good. And sometimes that fighting to be right in the end, you lose the relationship. And what's the point of that? Because actually you said over time, even though you went in different directions, you kind of landed in a similar, not exactly the same, but in a similar place. Yeah, I think we kind of almost like swung out for a while. And at this point, when you're that far away, it can feel, you know, just a little bit disorienting. But eventually, as we both followed Jesus, we found that we ended up right where we needed to be. And we, you know, came back into unity on on many, many things. Um, And the whole time, even when we were this far apart, um, you know, we still had a lot of fun and we still had a good marriage and we still had, you know, great conversations. And, you know, just because everything that we believed didn't match anymore, um, that wasn't the end of the story for us. Um, We kind of saw it almost as a place to grow together and to um, try to connect, right? And so... I think that's a possibility. You know, I think your story, I think people do relate to your story. And, you know, sometimes people do need to step away from church because they've been hurt or disappointed and they're processing that and they need to find God in a different way. And you found God in a different denomination in a different way. Tell me a little bit about the journey back really to Mm -hmm. your roots, partially at least. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's funny because when I first initially sort of set out into this season of my life, I called it my wilderness because I'm nothing if not a bit dramatic. <laughs> so that's just what happens when you're a writer. So I, you know, I kind of set out into this season of wilderness and I really did think that I had somehow evolved past church, you know, that, that it wasn't necessary for my life any longer or, you know, had all sorts of questions about how it functions and why and what it's even for. Um, and so I don't think, I, I almost was surprised when I found myself back at church as like a proper church lady where I'm like, you know, making casseroles and I teach Sunday school and you know, all the things that I thought would never again happen. Um, and it snuck up on me in a really beautiful and, uh, and holy way. Um, but I think that part of that for me was beginning to recognize that almost all the time, um, even when you set out on a journey and then you come home, you see it with new eyes, right? Because you've now had new experiences. You've encountered, you know, different thought. You've read, you know, a little bit more widely. And it helped me to see um, the beauty of what I had been given and the wholeness that was there and the life that was there. And it became incredibly dear to me. Um, once I had done a little bit more wandering then um, on the other side of that, it was funny how much I reclaimed. Hmm. And that's the work of God. And, and so why do you think he took you on that journey then like to, to go away and then to come back? Is it to appreciate what you had? Was it to, to sort through things a little bit more? How do you see it now? You know, I see it now as actually a, a pretty common part of most people's spiritual formation. I think that maybe oftentimes you don't talk about it a whole lot. Um, but I don't think that ever when we are following Jesus, we're ever really, um, it isn't necessary to have this sort of, you know, spiritual or intellectual dishonesty. You know, that oftentimes you are supposed to enter into some of those questions and to, to peek behind the curtain and to, to push into the places where maybe you feel a bit of pain or wondering or, or questioning. I think that God was waiting for me in that place. Um, You know, the journey certainly isn't over. You know, I'm kind of interested to see 10 years from now how many things I've written in this book that I've, you know, even shifted on or changed on in in that way. I think that that's a big part of the excitement of following Jesus is just knowing that you are, as long as you are walking with Jesus, you're going to be in the right place. 
and he's transforming us every day into more like he is, which is which we don't even know where we're headed. We don't know what we're going to look like. Absolutely. And half the time, it's very surprising. I know. <laughs> I can say that that is absolutely true. I definitely am not who I thought I would be, but I'm so thankful for what he's done. Absolutely. And it's always more than what I ever imagined. Mm -hmm. You know, last question. You, you talked about, um, you know, finding yourself as the casserole lady. And you say in your book, like, one of the things that you've discovered is the discipline of staying put. Staying yes. in a, as an imperfect person in an imperfect community of believers, you have learned the beauty of that. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, a lot of times when I was coming of age um, within the church, um, there was a, a lot of conversation about being radical for Jesus and about, um, you know, I kind of jokingly call it my evangelical hero complex, you know, that you had to do these big, big things for God. And it always seemed to look like it was out there or somewhere else and that there was this sense of um, just being able to be untethered right, that you were just always out in ministry and you were just kind of, you know, doing all these great big huge things for God. Um, and I don't know that I ever really learned then the kind of that radical spiritual discipline almost of staying put, of staying in a community, of showing up every Sunday, of loving people over the long haul, of letting yourself be known um, instead of just sort of skating on the surface of relationships and even beginning to see the holy moments in very ordinary lives and the times of transformation that happen far from stages and, you know, conferences or anything else, but instead in a very regular life as you have, I have four children, you know, so, you know, doing laundry and going to school <laughs> run and, you know, all the you things that go into it. for you all the time? <laughs> it's very <laughs> glamorous. I <laughs> <laughs> and that's it too, right? You talk in your book about like your husband leaving ministry and feeling like, you know, we, we're a failure mm -hmm. and then redefining that to say like, no, your husband, when he works as a carpenter, you know, yes. he, he's serving Jesus. He's representing Christ in the world. Absolutely. I think that's absolutely true. It's whatever we put our hands to, wherever mm -hmm. we are with your children, represent yes. Christ. That's a hundred percent true. I mean, I think that kind of almost built this false line between here's the things that are Jesus-y you know, and, and having like a very short list of what that could be. And then here's all the rest of my life. Mm. But instead beginning to see that the Spirit of God infused all those things and wanted to bring that into unity, that there was meant to be a seamlessness uh, to my life, no matter where I found myself, whether I was, you know, folding laundry or I was at church on Sunday or I was talking with my neighbors or I was preaching to a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, all of those things were places of holiness and encounter and goodness, um, no matter what it looked like from the outside. I totally agree. Well, there's so much more we could talk about your book out of sorts. Thank you so much for coming today. I love talking to you. Well, thank Went you. Bye really fast. <laughs> I did. Well, if you're watching this and maybe you're in a place where you have questions, you're in a tough place in your spiritual walk where your understanding of God doesn't seem to fit what you're going through. You know, we want to help you with that. We want to pray with you and just journey with you, listen to you. We have prayer lines that are up seven days a week, 24 hours a day that you can call. And we would love to help you with your journey, walk along with you, grieve with you, rejoice with you, whatever it is, give us a call.